Hey guys, so I wanted to make a quick video showing you how to easily, well, it's never easy, but how to uh, focus your OAG, so your off-axis guider, uh, which I currently have uh, over here on this little telescope here. So uh, I'm using the SI Air, and I'm going to just uh, show you how how you uh, focus your OAG. So once it's once it's in focus, I really suggest you never touch it again. So uh, I purposefully move the camera around so it's out of focus completely, but I suggest you don't. Uh, I really suggest that you um, keep it there forever afterwards, because it's, it's always a pain to focus an OAG compared to a guide scope. This is an off-axis guider. And this is a guide scope with a camera on it. So those are very different. This is what most people use uh, when they begin astrophotography. So this is like a mini telescope and the light goes through it like a regular uh, telescope or lens and it hits the sensor of the guide camera here. It's very simple to focus just up or down, I mean inwards or outwards. And it's very simple because the stars are very obvious when they go through this telescope here. So it's very, very simple to focus. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to focus an OAG uh, which is very different. Uh, here there is no guide scope. The, the light goes through your actual telescope. So, uh, and it hits this little prism here. There is a, a piece of glass and it's very hard to see, but it's, it's called a prism. And a tiny bit of the light going through your telescope will go through the prism and then get reflected towards the guide camera. So since it's only a bit of the light, uh, the stars will look much more faint and uh, it's, it's honestly a, <laughs> really annoying to focus. And so that's why I think this video is kind of um, important. So a way in OAG uh, is set up is, as you can see, the guide camera is here. And then we have a bunch of screws all, of, all over the place. Um, so if you take your camera, so I'm going to grab my astronomy camera here. You just attach the camera on this side here. And then if you look inside, you have the sensor. So in this camera, which is a 2600 MC, the sensor is rectangular. But if you have, for example, the 533, then you will have a, a square sensor. And here the prism should be um, at the bottom of the sensor, preferably. So at the bottom of the rectangle. Because if you have this, this, this prism, like for example, in the corner, or sometimes even on the side, then you will have uh, some vignetting or it will be even harder to see stars. So let's pretend my mind was like, for example, in the corner here, you could uh, easily rotate this by using those three screws. So I'm going to put this down. And if you loosen these screws, you can then rotate the camera like that. So for me, I'm gonna leave it like that, just at the, the bottom of the rectangle here, if you can see. Yep, just like that. And lastly, uh, you will see me do this in the video uh, tutorial later outside, but if you want to, you can uh, push or pull this prism uh, towards or away from the sensor uh, using this screw right here. And then later down the road, you can also move the camera using this screw here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to a bright star. So let's go to a, a bright star such as, let's see, let's do... Aldebaran, which is not too far. Okay, so it's currently slowing to Aldebaran. You really want a bright star because stars are really hard to see through an OAG, uh, so you really want to find a, a very bright one. Okay, and then what you want to do is get up from your cozy chair and go by the telescope. So I'm going to place the iPad somewhere around here so I can see it. Okay, so now we have Aldebaran centered. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the guide window, which you should also have uh, on your computer if you use PhD2. But on the ASI here, here I'm going to go to the actual uh, guiding window and start taking uh, frames non-stop by using those two arrows here. So now it's taking some frames. Uh, it's two seconds long. Uh, what I like to do is go to the guiding camera settings and I like to make the gain a bit higher. Uh, I'll go crazy over here to the, maybe like 92 is fine. Actually, it's probably too much. Let's see. I don't want it to be too noisy. And see, we currently have nothing. So I'm going to unscrew the OAG 
uh, where the camera is holding here and slowly move the camera around. So off-axis guiders are extremely sensitive so you want to move the camera like literally like millimeter by millimeter. Uh, there is no way you're going to be able to, to focus this easily if you uh, move the camera in and out uh, like crazy. So go tiny bit by tiny bit, especially if your exposure time is long. Make sure you wait until the full exposure is, uh, is done. So I'm currently moving it in words. Oh, we are seeing some stars now as you can see. So I'm going to be very careful here. And I'm going to just use both of my hands and try to go in and out extremely slowly until the stars look pinpoint. And one thing to note is that it's okay if the stars are a bit blurry. Okay, and once I am satisfied, I think this is good enough. Well, actually it's not. Yeah, that should be good enough. I'm going to re-screw on this side here. Okay, that should be good. So I'm going to just screw it very hard. And as you can see on the iPad, uh, the stars themselves are not round at all. Uh, but that's fine. If we click on one, for example, here, as you can see on the top left, it's completely not round. It's like a new UFO or like a comet, which is fine because uh, what PHG2 or the guiding software uh, that you're using cares about is the centroid of whatever shape it found. So this is not a round star, it's a comet looking star, but it will still be able to find the, uh, the center of it because it's just a shape and it's, it's visible. So if we tap on the target here, uh, target logo is going to calibrate. So go north, west, south and east. And um, it takes a bit of a while, maybe like five to 10 minutes sometimes. Uh, I think with the SIR, usually by doing two second exposures, it takes about three to four minutes, which is pretty good. So we're going to wait for now. And once it's done, we should be able to have a guiding graph available. Okay, so it took like three minutes, which was very really fast. And as you can see here, we have the graph. So you can toggle the graph on and on uh, using this button on the left here. Uh, you have some settings on the right, uh, aggressiveness for RA and deck. Uh, but as you can see here, we have a, a pretty good uh, pretty good guiding so far. Uh, it's around two, if you don't count the, uh, the beginning here. So now uh, we are properly focused, which is great. So I hope you guys uh, found this video helpful. I know it was very small, I mean, very short and very, uh, very quick, but that's how you, you focus an OEG. Uh, I know it can be a bit scary at first once you purchase one, so uh, yeah, I just wanted to make one, a quick video just in case. So I'll see you guys next time for more tutorials and clear skies. <laughs>